welcome to take two of this. I finished the live stream and then my streaming service deleted the live stream for some reason. This says link broken, link, link broken. So I'm like, no, we have to send it to the list. And it's not, in, it's not on YouTube, it's nowhere to be seen. I don't know what's happening. So I'm gonna record another live stream just in case if we can find it. <laughs> so welcome back to take two. I really hope that the other one is somewhere in the group. But if not, then this is round two. Okay, so today I'm super excited to share with you how to write stories that sell. And I'm going to go into a couple of details about, you know, the framework of my favorite story um, that actually helped me enroll a $54,000 client last year in September. It was definitely a story where I infused a lot of elegant vulnerability and I shared something that I was going through and that really... Um, I guess inspire that client. She said that that was kind of the post that like made her want to work with me. So of course she had been following like to transparency, full transparency. She had been following me for at least six months, I think it was, or six months, because that's when we met um, six months before that post. And then at the time when I posted that, the next day she was like, I need to work with you. So just another example that the compound effect of con creating consistent content is so powerful. Um, but yeah, this was a post that literally had no call to action. It was fully an elegant vulnerability, like sharing my lessons from a place of power. And that really helped that. I mean, that obviously was extremely effective. $54,000. I think that elegant vulnerability pays off. <laughs> so I want to share with you what does elegant vulnerability really mean? How can you use it in your content so that you're doing it in a way that's creating more connection with people and magnetizing them towards you versus pushing them away? Because when we don't use, when we're trying to be, you know, authentic online, or a lot of people think that being authentic online um, means just to kind of vomit all your feelings on social media. And that's not actually going to help you attract clients. That is probably going to hurt you in that way and push people away. So that's why I want to tell you a couple of things that are so important for when you share stories that um, maybe are, you know, vulnerable to you, unique to you, uh, but in a way that it's not going to hurt your positioning and kind of push away your clients because it's important to like, you know, this is stuff that people that we need to learn to navigate as we have a brand where authenticity is one of our biggest values. We are going to have stories to share that are maybe a little bit uncomfortable. And so you get, this is going to help you. This live stream is going to help you kind of have like checkpoints to make sure that you're doing it in a way that's elegant. Okay. So I'm super, super excited. So the first thing I want to share is why is elegant, what is, why is authenticity important? Think about when you watch a movie and you like a superhero movie, if the superhero was only like perfect and shiny and amazing and had no flaws or humanness, it would just, you wouldn't connect with them, right? You wouldn't, but uh, you wouldn't feel like you want to root for them because you feel like a, li a little bit of a disconnection or with that kind of facade of perfection but once you see that they have also like fears or that they go through stuff that they have quote-unquote flaws or vulnerabilities then you connect with them so much more because it humanizes them so it's the same thing with your brand we want to have an element of humanness um, which is actually one of the seven elements that I help my clients discover in their brand um, which is the first thing that we do is what are the things that make you more human right but here's the thing we can't just lead with that. That's just one element. What I share with my clients is that it's important that you lead with value, that you lead with proof, that you lead with, um, with authentic, with authority. Say, and by when I say authority, I don't mean like authoritative, like I know everything, but it's just the balance of sharing. I know what I'm doing. Here is the proof that it works. I have learned some things that can help you. And yes, I'm not perfect, but here are the things that I'm doing to um, to overcome that, right? So there is a full range. It's not just one or the other. It's not like I'm full authoritative or I'm, you know, a hot mess online. It's just a, a range of things that you want to lead with, right? So make sure that you are always leading with value and that you're leading with Proof, and by proof I mean sharing with people like, hey, this is working for my clients or I am my best case study. I know how to do this. I have implemented it for myself or here's how my clients are winning. 
And then you can also sprinkle content that is around more of your personal life. But I always recommend that you lead with value first, addressing your ideal client situation. So when it comes to sharing stories that are elegant, that have elegant vulnerability, think about the stories in your life where, you know, you've, that have marked you or that have, um, you know, led you to where you are now, right? And that the, the messier parts that maybe are a little bit scary to share. And then think about the lessons that you learned now that you've gone through that. What are the valuable key takeaways that you can share with your audience that can help them save time, that can help them avoid some of the mistakes that maybe you made, that can help them think about life in a different way. There's nothing more insightful than when you read someone's content and you kind of have a mindset shift, like a mindset, like a paradigm shift. Like they're helping you see life through a different lens. It's like, oh, I never thought that was possible. Oh, that's cool. And it doesn't have to be like a mind shaking thing. Um, it, it can be something simple like forgiveness. It can be something simple as, you know, slowing down or it can be something simple as pushing through, you know, maybe your fears or acting with courage, no matter what the evidence looks like. Does that make sense? So it doesn't have to be some crazy, amazing thing. It can just be smaller lessons in your day to day life that show that you are walking the talk, that show that you are taking responsibility for your own experience and that you're here sharing what you're learning as you go. Those are ways to identify moments of elegant vulnerability. Um, okay, let me just see if I have any questions here, any notes here. Um, yeah, so it's important that we use, that we, that we lead with value. So for example, I had, um, I don't know if I just, I don't know if I said this on the previous, um, message. Oh uh, yeah, it was in a previous live, but what I said in the previous live was that I had this post that the headline was, I betrayed my intuition and now I'm paying the price. And that's the post that got me that $54,000 client. And I went to explain all the things that I had just gone through with a company that, you know, I didn't mention any names. I didn't blame it on anyone. I took full radical responsibility for what happened. And I didn't even shame anything or anyone. I just, I just said, here are the things that I'm learning. You know, make sure that if you're, if your intuition speaking up, listen to it. Make sure that you ask questions um, when you're, you know, sales process. And I led it back to the thing that I help people with, right? I make sure that next time, if you find yourself in a situation where you're kind of doubting, if you need to sleep on it, sleep on it. No matter how people like try to push you, like honor your own boundaries. These are, those were some of the lessons that I share in that post. So I was in the middle of that, but I, and I felt called to share, but I made sure that I did it in an elegant way where I shared powerful lessons that my audience could take away, right? So think about that. Think about the lessons before you share it because otherwise it's just going to be sharing for the sake of, you know, expressing your feelings and your emotions and that's going to uh, hurt your positioning, right? Okay, so the next thing is that I wanted to cover is, yes, so a couple of examples of, when to not do uh, <laughs> elegant vulnerability in, in, in your stories and when to do it. So things to avoid, and I'm going to give you an example, and this is the case study that I had that I wanted to share is, you know, if you are going through a launch and you're not getting any sales, it's best if you don't, you don't have to tell people about that. If your finances are not the greatest, you don't have to tell people about that. That's for your own, that's for yourself. That's for your own privacy. Like you don't have to feel forced to share with people everything that you're going through, right? So instead what you can share is some of the valuable things that maybe you can offer your audience instead of kind of focusing on you or like, oh my gosh, this current situation, step aside and share like, how, how can I be of value to my audience? right? How can, how can I create even more value so that I, my results change, right? Instead of focusing on like your own story um, to, you know, kind of vent. It's not point of venting. So one of the examples that I've seen is people saying like, you know, I'm sick and tired of social media. I'm going to get off in a minute. So this is the last time that I'm going to be enrolling for my one-on-one. <laughs> so if you want to buy, buy now. Like that's not, that's not, um, elegant vulnerability, it's definitely not there, right? Like that's killing your position and people are not going to want to sign up with you because you're not actually coming from a place of power. You're like kind of ranting, right? So 
make sure that you look at what is the feeling that I have in my body when I want to share something that's like a rant. And am I coming from a place that's valuable for people? That's really, really important. Am I coming from a place of power? Am I sharing this for myself or because it's actually valuable to others? And am I taking responsibility for my experience? Once you do that, you're on the right track to personal to um, imp- to uh, infuse uh, elegant vulnerability. Okay, and the last thing that I want to share today is my one of my favorite story frameworks or story types to make offers and to kind of share maybe the your vulnerable past, but also coming off as uh, somebody who can actually offer help now. So redemption stories redemption stories are the stories where you share with your audience what are you know how you beat the odds regardless of you know your circumstances you overcame obstacles um you wanted something you overcame the obstacles and now you are you figure it out or some whatever that is right so think about all the times in your life or in your business whatever you help people with that you overcame the obstacles no matter what the odds were those are the stories that will position you as somebody who can help others even if it's something small like oh my gosh i had a webinar that didn't go well and you know the tech completely got ruined but then i figured it out I talked to my team or that launch didn't go well, but now I've learned from my experiences and this is what I did and these were the new results, right? Or something completely different that like, you know, I used to be, you know, I used to crave the life of the love of my life, but I just was not in touch with my emotions and I tried all these things or I was doing all these things to try to like attract them, but it just wasn't working until one day I had this breakthrough. I had this experience and changed the way that I saw things. Things change once I did X or it all happened, like it all clicked once I figured this out. And that is what I want for you. This is what I'm not that I want for you, but this is what's available to you too. If, if you want what I, you know, this result that I have. So you want to kind of share the story in a way that positions you more as somebody who has figured out something that they haven't and that you're here not to be the hero of the journey, but you're here to guide them to be the hero of their story. This is a concept that I learned from one of my mentors, uh, Donald Miller, and he is, you know, he, he really taught me that, that every single person wants to be, they all, we all want to be the heroes of our own movie, right? We don't want another hero coming into our movie. So, but we all want a guide. We all want somebody who can take us closer to where we want to be. So in your stories, instead of, you know, at the end, you can share, you know, you can share your whole hero's journey, but then you can share at the end, hey, I, you know, I'm here to help you become the hero of your own story. I'm held to help. I'm here to help you get exactly what you want in life. That's why I've created this program, right? That's why I've created this freebie. That's why I've created blah. So you are infusing a different kind of energy, not just like, I'm so cool. I'm so cool. I'm so cool, which is fine if you're cool. Like I love people who are like, you know, whatever your style to their own each each to their own but that's like share like your awesome the awesome parts but then also make sure that you remember to share with people hey i am here to help you at the end of the day because it's true you're here to help them and the final tip that is so important you guys your first the first section of your stories of your posts make them super captivating start with emotion start with the most captivating moment like that post i told you i betrayed my intuition and now i'm paying the price that was a captivating headline look through all my posts as you you know if you read my content and reverse engineer what i do because just from reading my free stuff you can get a lot and this the secret really that i have learned is that the most important part of your story is the beginning and the beginning is actually never the beginning of the story is normally like the most exciting part which is the middle right like you don't start from the beginning like once upon a time you know (laughs) you want to start from the the most exciting hook the most exciting moment the highlight right of what happened you create curiosity and then you go into like it wasn't always this way these are the things that i struggle with these are the obstacles that i have to overcome I tried all these things and it didn't even work until then. You know, this is what happened. I had to face my fears in this way. This is the truth of where I was. So that's what I'm going to leave you guys today. But if you want to go deeper into how to write compelling stories, because I can't give it all to you right now. Otherwise, we'll be here for like a long time. 
definitely make sure that you at least implement some of what I just told you, but really um, go through all your stories and look at the things that maybe work. Like, was that captivating or was that not captivating? Like, learn from your own stuff and practice, practice, practice. I am launching a mastermind. I'm super excited for it, where we're going to be diving deeper into how to write stories that sell. The first module is called Create a Magnetic Brand. And even just that module, there's going to be nine different modules that we're going to go over is a three month program. Super potent, super potent, super concise, amazing information that is just applicable and that you can implement it right away. Even just the first module, I just finished recording all the lessons this week and I'm like blown away. I'm like, I want to sign up for this so badly. It's so good. Because of even the first lesson, we're literally going deep into how to write a story that converts. I'm going to give you the three types of stories that sell, that are the best for uh, content to create emotion and to convert. And that's just the first lesson. Then after that, we decode all the elements to create a magnetic brand, we get clear on what are the stories that you want to share that are vulnerable, um, what are your values, and how to apply that into your brand and really lead with becoming not, not just being a personal brand, but actually being a movement leader, which is essentially what I created with the Expose Your True Challenge, a movement. So I'm going to teach you how to do all of that so that you can start leading with your truth, but in a really strategic way. What is your proof? What are What is your method? We're literally unlocking all of those elements and you're going to feel so clear on what to share, what not to share, what's your brand about. And then that's just for module one. Then we go into you know, attracting high level clients and then ultimately how to enroll those clients into your program. So I'm super excited for this mastermind. You guys send me a message if you want to hear more details. I haven't announced it to my, the public to like my personal page yet. Um, so send me a message. I'm going to do that in the next 10 days. So you are the first one to hear about it. Book a call with me. We can chat about it. I don't have the sales page yet, but I will send you the link once I have it. Um, but if this speaks to you, send me a message. All right. I have to go to a call. So have an amazing day and I'll speak to you soon. Bye.